Hi, I'm Alison Duke, and I'm a documentary filmmaker. I've been making films for over 15 years. Actually, I started in music videos, and I just fell in, in love with uh, the idea of making documentaries. And for the past eight years, eight to 10 years, I've been making social justice films, and particularly looking at H, um, HIV, women living with HIV. Something we have to address is that there's a lot of walls still built up in the community, and we should make work that tears down those walls and, um, and build bridges of conversation. So, you know, even though I'm talking about women living with HIV, how am I making work that will also relate to men? How the work that, um, you know, that somebody, may, somebody else may make about uh, gay men living with HIV, how does that relate to women? And making sure that we have, um, we make the work accessible to a variety of different um, communities. Because uh, when we see each other, like, you know what it's like watching a film, it might have nothing to do with you. And it could be from like the 1800s. But because there's something that connects you with the, the leading characters, um, maybe the the way they approached a problem, solving a problem or whatever, then you can relate to the whole film. That's what we have to do with the work, I think. So the issues will always change, but it's how we connect and deal with the issues that I think we can build uh, in the work. Intersectionality is, is something that's really important. Uh, I think for me as an artist, and I'm looking at it structurally as well, with now doing a hybrid work with intersecting actual uh, technique, you know, hybrid documentary and dramatic work in, together in one film, just to kind of, you know, push technically and, um, you know, those ideas together. But intersectionality uh, usually gets honed into this category of diversity. As long as we have a diverse group of people and the, the palette from brown or from black to brown to, you know, whatever, you know, to, you know, to white, then we're, we're, we're diverse. And so we don't really, um, we, we don't go a step further usually and talk about how are people uh, contributing to the larger conversation. You know, that's what diversity is. It's not just having people represented on the screen. How are they um, contributing to the com conversation? And how are they, as individuals, being uh, uh, sort of like uh, reflected on the stream, screen as someone with agency? That they have their own thoughts that hasn't been like, <laughs> not regurgitation of something else or hasn't, hasn't been projected on them. But how are you allow allowing those people on screen or a conversation in the room have their own thoughts without a pushback, without a larger um, oppression, where they're free to be who they are and say things in the way they want to say it, how they want, you know, the content, what they want to say uh, with freedom, without that judgment. And that's a, a bigger piece of work. So, uh, you know, I think uh, in a lot of spaces in, in, in Canada, you know, we're, we're trying to move towards that, but you can see that uh, we're not quite there. <laughs> Well, art gets us to feel, you know, sometimes we're so up here with, you know, trying to solve a problem, you know, come up with all this, you know, medical stuff that will help solve the problem or the biology or whatever. But sometimes, you know, how we feel could lead, lead us to solutions or at least get us to look at issues in a different way. That's why, you know, trust your gut, you know. It's that feeling, that gut feeling. We got to use that sometimes. And also scientists knows this. And when they're doing the research, they sometimes the breakthrough comes from that trusting their instinct or gut about an issue. So art is a good way of um, packaging that, that feeling. And um, so, you, you know, you don't have to be in the lab. You can be somewhere else somewhere else out in the world and, and experiencing that same feeling by yourself or with a group of people.